How's it going, guys? GGG has announced the Ruthless game mode, we'll call it. Now, originally when I've heard about Ruthless or Hard Mode, uh, I haven't ever really been too excited for it. I really didn't care. And after reading this, I'm actually really excited for this. So let's jump into it. Ruthless, previously codenamed Hard Mode, is an additional character creation flag alongside hardcore and solo self-found that allows you to opt in to extreme item scarcity in various other changes. This article explains some of the major changes, the release timeline, and how you can sign up for the alpha testing if you're interested. This article is not a set of patch notes, only significant changes are described, but without numerical detail. There are a lot of other small changes that aren't covered here, but this article should give you decent overall impression of Ruthless, which I think it does. So, what Ruthless is not. Ruthless is not for everyone. If you don't like the sound of it, then it's probably best you continue playing the regular Path of Exile modes. It's like Hardcore or Solo Self Found. Some players really enjoy the additional constraints as a way of enhancing their game experience. Many players do not, and that's okay. Ruthless is not a replacement for regular Path of Exile. It's a challenging mode for a specific player type, like me. A change being made in Ruthless is not an indication that we will make this change in the regular game. In fact, if we felt a particular change was good for the regular game, we just make it there to benefit everyone. Ruthless is not monetized any differently. You can play it for free and your existing microtransactions will work in it. Ruthless is not consuming significant development resources. It is a pet project that some senior designers have been working on in their spare time over the last 18 months. All right, now what Ruthless is. Ruthless is a mode about friction, tension, and anticipation. This. Through the past several years of myself playing the game, I feel like I've lost a lot of that anticipation, um, that excitement that you get when a really rare item drops or something crazy happens. Now, like, exalts or divines drop, and I'm just like, add it to the pile. It's like, even when I'm playing in Solo Cell Found, and I feel like this is going to be able to bring that back to me, which is something I'm super excited for. So it's brutally difficult, but overcoming that difficulty feels highly rewarding. In a world where your items are far below par, every item drop has the potential to be the breakthrough one you need. Ruthless is a mode that reimagines traditional understanding of where Path of Exile's endgame is. It redefines the entire game as the endgame. Even reaching higher campaign acts, let alone maps, is an achievement. Traditionally weak items are suddenly very valuable. High level characters are good. High level characters and good rare items infer immense bragging rights. Ruthless is a mode where you barely find any items. You might get to act four without equipping a pair of rings, but each ring you find represents a huge power boost. Ruthless is a mode where most items are normal rarity. You don't see a lot of magic items and even fewer rare items, but finding a rare item of a base type you're looking for feels amazing. Ruthless is a mode where you find very little crafting currency. You might only find one alchemy orb throughout the whole campaign, but that orb lets you convert any base type of your choice into a rare item. Ruthless is nostalgic. We picked the name partly because it was the third of four difficulty levels was called back in closed beta. Aspects like item scarcity and support gems being valuable really feel like the early days of Path of Exile, just without desync. Now, it made me think of something that I saw way back when I was a kid. The passage is intense, but if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few. That was a commercial I remember seeing when I, was, when I was a kid. And yeah, it kind of feels like that. They're presenting us with that, basically. So there are some like things they list here that I'm not like super sure on. And a lot of things that I am very excited for. So let's start with the item scarcity. The core Ruthless experience is that you don't have strong enough items to handle the content. Every item that drops has the potential to be an upgrade to your current gear. 
In Ruthless, the quantity of items dropped has been massively reduced throughout all game content. The rate of finding magic, rare, and unique items has been massively reduced throughout all game content. Rings, amulets, and belts are much rarer than in regular Path of Exile. They cannot be purchased from vendors. Most league reward systems have been changed to only grant item rewards that are specific to that league. For example, cluster jewels only come from Delirium, plus items from the core drop pool. And Ruthless, getting items from the core drop pool is a valuable reward, especially when there's an item rarity bonus. So this, I, I would really like to hope, like, Abyss Jewels only come from Abyss. Cluster Jewels from Delirium, like it says. But Catalysts only come from Metamorph. Oils only coming from Blight. Heists only coming from the Dropbox thing. Like, all that. I would love to see all of that kind of stuff tailored to its specific league content. It makes that content much more valuable. Many deterministic items like divination cards or onigroshi cannot be obtained. Many bosses like Xeria that grant unique drops still do, but are often harder to access. No divination cards. And that really piqued my interest because if there was any like one change I could make about Path of Exile, and this was this is something I would never ask for, but it would be removing divination cards. Like I wouldn't want to take away something that a lot of people have paid money for in the game. Um, I think they have a place in the game and it has helped grow Path of Exile um, through the support of divination cards. I'm excited that they're not in the game because I think the game as a whole is just better without them, in my opinion. So I think playing without divination cards is going to be something that I actually really enjoy. Limited crafting. In Ruthless, most of your items come from killing monsters. It's hard to find magic rare and unique items, and it's even harder to craft them. Crafting is a very powerful luxury that you'll have to use sparingly for the right items. The drop rate of crafting currency items has been massively decreased. The rate at which you receive shards of crafting currency when vendoring items has been decreased. Master crafting is not available, the crafting bench cannot be accessed, and recipe lengths cannot be found. Veiled Chaos Orbs, Orbs of Binding, Orbs of Dominance, Influenced Exalted Orbs, and Awakener's Orbs cannot be obtained. When an influenced item is reforged or the influenced mod is removed, its influence is lost. Most vendor recipes are not available. A few new Ruthless specific vendor recipes have been introduced. I'm not completely sold on all of this. So the first thing that jumps out to me is if the currency is being lowered across the board, which means we're going to have less alchemy orbs, no orbs of binding, yet we want to roll our maps. If there's not enough alchemies to craft gear, then there's definitely not going to be enough alchemies to roll maps. We don't want to be running white maps. Like, we just don't. It's just like a no-brainer. Like, you, do, you, you don't want us to be running white maps. So I'd like to hope that items drop magic or rare, like the, the maps themselves will drop magic or rare. Then we won't have to use the currency to craft them, but since we don't have the currency to re-roll them, we're kind of stuck with what they give us. Maybe that's okay. And then an influence item being reforged or the influence mod is removed the influence is lost to me like there's there's lots of different influence types and including the new like enchants so i wonder if you have an enchanted item like a helmet that you got that has one of the new implicits on it if you then roll that item does that go away that feels strange if there's no influenced exalted orbs finding influence bases from the conquerors in particular, is already very difficult to find a good influenced base. And then if you re-roll it, it's just gone. You don't get the influence anymore. I don't like that. Um, I think if it's going to be really hard to get the influenced item, getting the influenced item should give you the influenced item. Getting rid of the exalted orbs, awakener orbs, like I feel like that's okay. Um, not being able to combine them and make them ridiculous is fine, but let the influenced item be the influenced item. Maybe like Shaper and Elder, it seems like those are much more commonly available of the influenced items. Maybe in that case, I don't know. It's still, it still kind of feels bad thinking about this. Grinding yourself to the point where you can actually get influenced items and then the influenced items just like wither away. I don't, I don't think that that's a good change personally. Hey, skill and support gym changes. In Ruthless, skill gym drops matter. Skill gem drops matter a whole lot. Gems cannot be purchased from vendors. The Fixture of Fate and Death and Rebirth quests each 
award you a token that can be traded to Siosa for any skill gem of level 31 or lower. So that's it. That's all the gems you get. All the rest come from drops. And that, when I when I read this, I was just like, that is amazing. Um, adding this change in specifically really kind of makes your progression very different than it would be normally. You're going to get things that are just going to like do you into like recreating your whole character and things like that. And I'm really excited for it, honestly. Grinding for skill gems sounds cool. And the ability to trade skill gems also sounds cool. That was something we used to be able to do a long time ago. Having just a whole like stash tab of skill gems that you were selling like four to eight alterations a piece. I, I was doing that a long time ago and you could now you now the way things are like you really only sell 20 quality gyms level gyms because they drop all over the place so i'm very favorable to this trade or this change support gyms can only be found as random drops you cannot obtain them deterministically ruthless is a league of item scarcity when items are scarce, they are exciting to find, exciting to look for, exciting to trade. We are defining support gems as items. This means some builds are harder to assemble, and careful planning is needed by SSF Ruthless players. Gems gain far less experience than they do in regular Path of Exile. It's a lot harder to level your skills up, which is another access of reduced character power in Ruthless. A melee character's damage comes from their weapon. Spellcasters get a lot of their damage from their gems as they level up. This change helps reduce the power gap between these two playstyles that is otherwise exacerbated by item scarcity in Ruthless. It also means that when you're farming an area for item drops, you can grind for gym experience at the same time. Almost all movement skills are not available in Ruthless. In this mode, movement skills trivialize game systems that matter a lot more, such as terrain layout, monster body blocking, an actual level traversal. Here's a full list of movement skills that are not available in Ruthless. Dash, Frost Blink, Flame Dash, Lightning Warp, Leap Slam, Shield Charge, Whirling Blades, Blink Arrow, Smoke Mine, Body Swap, and Charge Dash. Venom Guy relies on Whirling Blades and is hence also not available. Now, I am not in favor of this change, mostly because I can't make a build that would generally apply to the whole of the PoE player base because a lot of these skill gems would be used in any kind of normal build. But let's look at what remains here. So I have all of the like any kind of movement related gems here. So there's no leap slam, there's no shield charge, we still get chain hook, we still get ambush, no charge dash, we get phase run. No Blink Arrow, no Smoke Mine, no Whirly Blades, no Venom Guy or no Dash. Stormbind remains, no Lightning Warp, no Flame Dash, no Body Swap, no Frost Blink. So that leaves us with these four. We get Chain Hook, which requires you to use a one-handed Mace, Scepter, Sword, or Axe, and you can generate Rage, like one Rage if it hits an enemy. Uh, ambush, like teleports you to a nearby enemy. Phase Run uses all of your frenzy charges for a buff to movement speed i feel like this would be pretty handy and stormbind is a skill that puts runes on the ground and you can teleport to the targeted rune with rune blast so that's kind of a movement ability there other just like base movement skills you have mirror arrow has a movement tag flicker strike cyclone consecrated path and haste these are all movement related items that are still going to be there other things there is temporal rift which has a mana reservation to it and you like save a spot and you can like work back to it um withering step gives you movement speed and applies withered and uh it grants you elusive along with nightblade so i think elusive is going to be absolutely broken in this uh, with comparative to other changes and then we still have access to Flesh Offering, Berserk, these, these give movement speed. And then there's still, like, Minion Speed is still there, and Convocation, allow you, you to warp all of your minions to you, um, is still there. I feel like, in relation to a lot of the other changes, Convocation kind of sticks out as something that is in the same line, just with a different 
aspect to it. Okay, so let's jump back into this. So there's additional changes. Ruthless is challenging and punitive. It contains a number of changes that make Path of Exile harder and allow skilled players to differentiate themselves from everyone else. A compounding character experience penalty applies from level 68 onwards. It takes a lot of investment to achieve high level ruthless characters. Item drops are not allocated to specific party members. Looting is entirely free for all. Items really matter. Better pick them up before someone else does. So what this means, which is like I'm fine with playing free for all with other players and parties, but what this is going to come down to is one, aura bots are going to trivialize everything anyways or bots are going to run around and pick stuff up so you're going to see a lot of aura botting loot goblins and then you if you're playing on another realm that is further from where you live then you are at that disadvantage as well i feel like this is a controversial change but one that really to me doesn't matter all that much I don't really have any intention of like mapping with someone that I don't trust. To me, that doesn't really matter. Flasks and life and mana are not restored upon entering town or your hideout. Vendors that sell flasks and Helena in your hideout can refill them for you. This disincentivizes the strategy of using portal scrolls as an instant full heal. This change is dumb. Like absolutely dumb. This is just adding tedium to using a portal scroll. What, what is going to happen is we're going to stack Helena on top of our map device. And then if we want to pour her out for flasks, then we're just going to portal out, click Helena and go back in the map. Just like we normally, it just adds another click to it. it it's just like tedium for no reason at all. I would be more okay with this if maps were like one portal only. Like I would love a league like that, a trade league where all instances only have one portal um, for maps and bosses and stuff. So like solo self-found trade league or like self-play trade league, something like that. I think that would be really cool. But then since you only have one portal, you can't refresh your flasks. You could have an inventory full of build flasks that you could inventory micro into your belt so that you could use them. I think like that kind of has some more D2 feel to it but having an extra click to refill the flasks on using the portal nah nah not really having that at all it makes no sense onslaught does not grant movement speed and ruthless this relates to the absence of movement skills now to me as like a dedicated raider player this hurts a lot actually really heavily neuters the idea of the caster raider play style that is like 90% of the builds that I play. I feel like this is unwarranted and I'm like, again, I play Raider, like as my go-to on everything, I play Raider. So I'm a little biased here, but I feel like Onslaught is getting the nerf that Rampage deserves in this case. Rampage being able to stack movement speed is far more impactful as far as player movement goes than Onslaught is without a doubt and then if it still had the movement speed it would actually make raider not feel as bad because on raider like if you're playing an attack build you, you're probably better off going for the frenzy charge stuff anyways in which you get movement speed for frenzy charge and you're still going to get all that speed but onslaught that's the route you would take for any kind of caster build which it does grant you cast speed but the movement speed really kind of help makes up for a lot of the less access to like spell type damage that you have playing as a raider so i'm also not for this change but you change this to rampage and i think it's just much better overall because we're gonna like without without a lot of the speed we're gonna be forced into rampage like 100 percent everybody is like that actually levels is gonna be running rampage gloves everyone if you die near quest boss in the campaign a chunk of its life is recovered. That's fine. Hardcore ruthless characters are not migrated to standard ruthless upon death. They are just permanently dead. I mean, I don't know why that needs to make any kind of difference. Not being able to showcase a character once it has died, like what it had on it kind of feels bad. Though I'm probably kind of more geared towards standard ruthless anyways. But utility flasks cannot gain charges while active and have lower duration than they do in regular Path of Exile. I'm fine with that. And then again, like if I could have multiple 
four extra flasks in my inventory that I could swap in if they were to run out of flash charges. I think that would be a great change. I think it'd be fantastic. This change I love. Scarabs only enable mechanics in a map. They do not scale in power with their tiers. Instead, higher tiers of scarabs are needed for higher tiers of maps and wing scarabs do not exist. I think that's really cool. And hopefully there is a vendor recipe to upgrade scarabs because they do not drop in near high enough quantity to uh, be able to support running them in red maps with any kind of consistency at the current drop rate. And if you're able to farm the highest tier content, you want to be farming that highest tier content. Since the league specific reward types are getting shifted to their actual league content, you might be pushed into using scarabs a lot more often and being forced to run lower tiers of maps just for the sake of using the scarabs i don't like that so an idea like being able to like three to one upgrade them i think would be cool there is a ruthless specific atlas passive skill tree we don't have any more details on that content from past leagues is encountered less often than in regular path of exile you do not accumulate free daily atlas missions um vol side areas and kindling orbs and stilling orbs do not exist in ruthless so no Enchanted flasks, no vault side areas. So that means you cannot have easy access to Atziri. Easiest way to get to Atziri would be to corrupt maps then probably. Unless fragment rewards can still drop all over the place. Probably not. I think getting to Atziri is going to be pretty hard. And then Ruthless uses separate item filter files which must be created specifically for it. If players used regular Path of Exile ones then they would filter out items that, they're, that are actually very useful in Ruthless. So... This is GGG doesn't trust the player base to use their own item filters. You have to actually create a specific one for it, but I'm still using my own personally coded loot filter um, that I update as needed for whatever, um, rather than using filter blade. See filter blades going to have to figure out how to give loot filters to players for ruthless. Whereas I'm just going to make whatever changes need to be made to the one I already have. Things that are not mentioned in here that I'm curious about. Like, I, I mentioned the alchemy orbs for maps, being able to roll maps. I don't want to have to start using fossils on maps when it's going to be so incredibly hard to roll, I guess, get fossils and roll the correct gear. Can't use essences on maps. Maybe essences are just going to be way OP um with their availability who knows something that is also not mentioned at all is the lab if lab is really rewarding the lab chests are really rewarding i'm gonna be really mad <laughs> if it's really easy to find the lab trials and be able to get and run the lab and you get all those chests at the end i like i hope it i hope it's balanced because you can get so much stuff out of those chests. I'm a little worried about that. And then like based on all the like movement changes, like 100% elusive Nightblade, it's going to be OP. Tailwind is going to be OP. Deadeye just gets that. Whereas everybody else has to get Hunter boots and then have the Tailwind roll on the boots with other good rolls because you can't reroll it to get Tailwind. To me, like Deadeye gets to keep its speed. And then Pathfinder gets to keep its speed because you get the increased flask effect. And then Raider gets its speed nerfed because everybody has the ability to get Onslaught. I'm kind of bummed about that. Anyways, alpha testing. We're running small scale alpha test for Ruthless and we're looking to recruit some players from the community. We're very interested in getting gameplay feedback from players who love the sound of everything Ruthless embodies. So if this is you, please fill out this form. I already did that. We'll pick some waves of players to be added over the next few weeks. This alpha is based on 3.19 and we do not allow streaming or distribution of footage from the initial version of this alpha. We will likely allow streaming at some stage before the release, but we'll let you know. Please limit discussion of ruthless alpha testing to the relevant Discord server until the NDA is lifted. So if I get into the alpha, I'm definitely going to play it. I do plan on playing all three of the upcoming events i'll get level 100 and like both the mayhem and the delirium everywhere like i'm currently testing what it takes to get to depth 600 i haven't done that in a long time in delve so when i get the opportunity to like be doing the alpha testing i definitely will um and since i can't make content for it on days that i might be playing ruthless for the alpha testing assuming i make it in of course on those days i will just upload 
some Rift Wizard, which I'm going to debut on the channel come tomorrow. So release timeline, we would expect to publicly release Ruthless alongside 3.20 expansion in December. The first league with Ruthless active will still be deemed a bit of a beta test, and hence we will not be afraid of making mid-league adjustments to Ruthless, which is something we try to avoid in the regular game. Challenges will not be enabled in Ruthless 3.20. So if you want challenges, you can't play Ruthless. Ruthless will launch as additional character creation flag. We will support all permutations of hardcore SSF Ruthless as each combination targets a different type of player. Some people will play hardcore Ruthless for the ultimate adrenaline rush. Some people will play SSF Ruthless because they want to demonstrate mastery of Path of Exile's item progression. Some people will play with all three modes turned on because they can't. I think I would probably play trade on this um, just because since I have such an abundance of time to be able to play, I can probably funnel a lot of items to people and um, actually be some kind of help. But then at the end of the day, I like to do 100 push races and it always feels bad when you push to 100 and you get beat by the player that has the aura bot playing with them. Um, where I tend to want to play more solo self found, but like to have the option to trade. That's why I have been thinking about this one portal instance kind of thing. Anyways, Ruthless is a mode where you aren't expected to get to maps. Even if you do get to maps, you're probably not going to reach red maps. If you somehow get there, how will you sustain them with such little access to currency? Will anyone manage to kill pinnacle bosses? Will anyone even see an uber pinnacle boss? We're very excited to see how this experiment plays out. I can say with 100% certainty that uber serious is not possible on Raider without the onslaught movement speed. It's barely possible with the onslaught movement speed. Um, without it, like Raider's not getting through that. It's it's the medium base. It's just not happening. I'm I'm really excited about ruthless. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see how I can figure out how to make things work in a built like area where I can't do this um, and move around. Tailwind's still going to be busted. I mean, this build uses Nightblade as well, so like I, I'm not I'm not super excited about losing the movement skills. I don't think getting rid of them is the correct solution. Maybe changes are made to movement skills to allow them to be more generally ex like used. I was like, there's not going to be any crazy flame dash flame surge significance going on um, because we don't have flame dash it just takes away stuff like that on top of like because of their ability to like actually move so like maybe maybe we can figure something out for that and it seems like ggg is going to make me actually buy this gym stash tab that i haven't purchased yet but it can hold lots of gems and uh it sorts them and things, and if we're trading gyms, that's probably going to be something that I need. But yeah, I'm excited for Ruthless. Let me know what you think of it. Is it for you? Is it not? I, I am willing to bet that most players are not going to want anything to do with this. But for me, as a content creator, I think being able to take people along on that journey through Ruthless as I, like, continue to just grind it out and grind it out. I think that's going to be really exciting. Like finding rare items is going to be exciting and like having exciting moments and the character progression really being something meaningful, I think is going to be really fun and like something I'm very excited about. I might even start next league playing Ruthless. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how things go. Hopefully I get into the alpha test. And that's all I've got for today. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you'd like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks to the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.